الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد So I'd like to welcome everyone to this evening talk here in Leeds. Wallah, it is such a pleasure to be here. It's such a pleasure to come back to the masjid. And it's a ni'mah from the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah azza wa jal gathers us together in a house from the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we find in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِّن بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهِ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم No people come together in a house from the houses of Allah reciting the book of Allah and studying it among themselves except that Allah sends his tranquility upon them and his mercy covers them and the angels surround them and Allah mentions them to those who are with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a huge and vast and immense reward for coming to sit in the masjid together just to remember some of the ayat of the book of Allah and some of the ahadith in the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then I want every one of you to understand that the nature of this life that we live in is that this life is a place of tests and trials. From this is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةِ وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ Wallahi, I honestly believe if it were the case that we only took this ayah today and we didn't learn any other ayah than this one. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, it would be enough for us to understand the reality of the life that we are in and the challenges that we face. Every single one of us is going to die, my brothers. Every single person among us وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord until that which is certain will come to you. And Allah says, we test you with things that are bad and things that are good as a trial. Don't think that Allah Azza wa Jal only tests you in those things that are bad. Rather, Allah tests you in things that are bad and Allah Azza wa Jal tests you in things that are good. No doubt our brothers and sisters all around the world in Gaza and elsewhere there are people suffering that are suffering you cannot find the words to describe it. And we sit here in comfort with ease with everything at our fingertips. My dear brothers and sisters, don't think that Allah is not testing you. Allah Azza wa Jal is testing you. He is testing what you're going to do with this ni'mah, just like He is testing the patience of those people that He chooses from His wisdom, that they will endure hardships in this life. وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna. We test you with that which is bad and that which is good as a trial. وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ Don't ever forget that we're going back to Allah. Don't ever forget that يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Every single person will answer for what they did. 
and every single injustice will be made right. And I don't say that to lighten, or I don't say that to make light of what is going on in the world today. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that to make light of what is going on, that don't worry about it, Yom al Qiyamah, it will be made right. But there's a difference between us and between, between the non-Muslims. And that is why Allah, or that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ فَإِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ how amazing is the situation of the believer? Every single thing in their life is good for them. And this is only for the believer. Yani when the kafir loses a loved one, it's a catastrophe for them. When the kafir loses their home, it's a catastrophe for them. When the kafir loses something precious, it's like they lost everything. But for the believer, it's not like that. For the believer, whatever happens to you in your life, your situation will not stop being good. Because whatever good happens to you, you're going to be grateful to Allah for the good that's happened to you. And whatever bad happens to you, you're going to be patient in the face of that difficulty and that calamity that happens to you. And so whatever happens to you in your life will not cease to be good for you. Doesn't mean good for you in terms of this moment in time. In the sense that we're not saying it's a good thing to lose your life, to lose your home, to lose your family. Like in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Every single thing you go through, every suffering that happens to you, a believer is not pricked with anything like even a thorn, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them for it and forgives them for it some of the mistakes that they make. So don't think that our situation is like the situation of the disbelievers. They have no hope. They have nothing to hope in. They have no hope in the Akhirah. And when you have no hope in the Akhirah, by default you have no hope in getting anything in this life. This dunya is not created to be your Jannah. It's not created to be the place where you live in happiness forever. It's a place of tests and trials. The one who created death and life to test which of you are best in deeds. The reason I wanted to start off with this is I don't want us to fall into what the disbelievers fall into ripping their clothes and beating their backs and hitting their cheeks and wailing and screaming. The believer is not like that. We recognize that every single thing that Allah Azza wa Jal decrees has a hikmah in it. Hikmatun baligha, an infinite wisdom. Everything that Allah decrees. In the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, وَالشَّرُّ لَيْسَ إِلَيْكَ Evil is not attributed to you. The scholars, they say, the reason we don't attribute evil to Allah. When Allah said, Min sharri ma khalaq, from the evil that He created. The reason that we don't attribute evil to Allah Azza wa Jal is why? Because everything that Allah decrees in this world has a wisdom for it. There's a reason for it. There's a purpose behind it. There are lessons to be learned. There are rewards to be had. There are people who will be forgiven for what they suffer. There will be people who will be raised in their ranks in paradise. There are people who will be corrected, people who will make tawbah. Good things will come out of the things that Allah decrees 
in everything that Allah Azza wa Jal decrees in this world, it has a reason for it and a purpose behind it. Whether we know that reason or not, our faith in Allah does not allow us to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees something evil just for the sake of that evil. Ta'ala Allah. High is Allah above that. That Allah decrees evil for evil's sake. Rather Allah Azza wa Jal decrees evil for a wisdom that is infinite. Whether we know that wisdom or whether we don't. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Inna hadha al-Qur'an yahti lillati hiya aqwa. This Qur'an guides you to that which is the best of everything, the most upright of everything. So if we go back to the Qur'an, and we go back to the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we go back to the seerah, or the seer, the biographies of the early generations, Wallahi, we see every piece of guidance that is needed and every piece of information to be able to navigate the calamities that this ummah is going through today. And we understand that the later part of this ummah will not be corrected except with what corrected the earlier part. As is narrated from some of the great Imams of Islam. So we're going to learn from what? From the Quran and from the Sunnah and from what the early generations went through. And from that, we're going to take our guidance of how to behave. We're not going to say something against the Qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. We're not going to complain and say, why is this happening to us? Or why is this happening to our brothers? Or why is this happening to the Muslims? We're going to look at the Quran. We're going to look at the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what the early generations went through. And in that lens, we're going to make sense of what is going on in the world today. Knowing that this world is a place of trials and a place of tests. And it's not meant to be our Jannah. If this world meant anything to Allah Azza wa Jal, He would not have given the kafir a drop of water to drink. If this world was the weight of the wing of a gnat, Janah Ba'udah, the wing of a gnat, like the wing of a mosquito, if this world was worth that in the sight of Allah, He would not have given the kafir even a drop of water to drink let alone a land, let alone an army, let alone a country, let alone a continent or whatever. He would not have even given them water to drink. But since this world doesn't count with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except as a place of tests and trials. So in it, Allah Azza wa Jal through his wisdom allows it that sometimes it can be the case that the disbelievers have a certain amount of authority a certain amount of power through which they put them believers to trial. And that is not something new, my brothers. That's not something that happened last week or three months ago. Rather, even in the stories of the Prophet ﷺ, we see how the believers suffered at the hands of the enemies of Allah. And how Allah Azza wa Jal commanded them to be patient and how the Prophets alayhimu salatu was salam increased them in hope in Allah and hope in the future of what? And that the future is Islam and the future is for the believers. And subhanAllah, they endured those trials. The Prophets alayhimu salatu was salam and their people the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Sahaba. So we realize this is not something new. This is not something that happened a few months ago. But this is something that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala decrees from time to time. And it has its causes. And it has things that we can do to bring about a solution bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. And it has a wisdom behind it. So the believer sees everything that happens to him or her as an opportunity 
to gain reward with Allah. The people who are suffering, the believer sees their suffering as a way to get near to Allah. The people who are not suffering, they see the blessing that Allah has given them as a way to get near to Allah. Because that's what we're here for in this world, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and to know Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, knowing Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is from the greatest of the purposes for which we are placed on this earth. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Allah الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلموا لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما الله الذي خلق سبع سماوات Allah created seven heavens ومن الأرض مثلهن and from the earth the likes of them the command of Allah goes between the heavens and the earth. All of this, so you know Allah. So that you know Allah is able to do all things and that you know Allah has encompassed everything with His knowledge. If you know Allah, everything that happens in this world, you see it in a completely different light. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. Every single Muslim that is suffering any place in the world, Allah knows their suffering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what will relieve. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do anything. If Allah wants to do something, He only says, Kun fayakun, be and it is. You know that Allah is Al-Hakim, the one whose wisdom is found in everything that He decrees. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Nasir, Ni'ma Al-Mawla wa Ni'ma Al-Nasir. What an excellent protector and an excellent bringer of victory. The more you know about Allah Azza wa Jal, the more you know about Allah Azza wa Jal, the more you will see the events of this world differently. Because if we know that Allah can relieve the situation of the believers, every one of them in the world who is suffering, and Allah can relieve it with the word kun, fayakun, be and it is. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, however strong an army may be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stronger than them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his punishment is far far worse than anything which any army can inflict upon a people in this world. The criminal people, Allah's punishment will never ever be kept away from them. So you know this about Allah, you are certain about this. Your belief in Allah's power to destroy the enemies of Islam, you have no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do it. Whenever He wants and however He wants. And that none of them will be able to stand even a moment, even the blink of an eye against the command of Allah when it comes. And you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al qarib the nearest. al mujib the one who answers dua. أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَى وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ وَيَجَعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who answers the one in the time of desperate need. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who removes calamities. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you the earth. Who gives you a place that this is your place on the earth. There is no God with Allah. There is no one shares this with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole earth and everything that is in it belongs to him. 
So now, when you look at this and you look at one more thing, you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no human being more beloved to Allah or closer to Allah or who has their dua more accepted by Allah than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if I were to ask you, why did the Prophet Sallallahu suffer for so long in Mecca? 13 years of being attacked, of being insulted, of the Sahaba being tortured. That's the majority of the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even in Medina, the hardships that he suffered and the difficulties that he suffered and the enmity that he faced. But he was the closest of the people to Allah. And the one whose dua was accepted. And the one who is the greatest and the nearest of the Allah's awliya, the one the most beloved to Allah. So this gives you a different perspective when calamities happen. You realize that it's not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has abandoned you. And it's not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not able to relieve your distress. But it is because of a wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. <coughs> when you know Allah Azza wa Jal, you have increased hope in Him. In Surah Al Anbiya, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions a large number of the Prophets. والسلام, and He mentions them, many of them, and their stories. Until Allah Azza wa Jal said, "Innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrat." Innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrat, wa yad'una na raghaban wa rahaba, wa kanu lana khashi'in. They used to rush to do good deeds. They used to call upon us in fear and hope. And they were submissive to us. Look at what we can learn from this in our attitude towards calamities. We are racing to do good deeds. Didn't the Prophet ﷺ say, Badiru bil a'mali fitanan? Race to do good deeds before a fitna comes to you. My brothers, do you feel that you're safe? Do you feel safe that Allah is not going to bring a tribulation and a trial and a calamity to your own city, to your own country, to your own home? May Allah keep us safe. We never feel safe that Allah is not, we don't feel like it can never happen that Allah will put me in a, in a situation like that. So we race to do good deeds while we have the chance. And wallahi, this is also something very important. And I see it to be a real flaw in the way people respond to the suffering of our brothers and sisters is that we don't appreciate the ni'mah that we have and we don't use it. We love to scream and shout. We love to make noise because it makes us feel better. It means that when we go home and we go off to waste our time and spend our time with things that doesn't please Allah, we can say, okay, I did something. The reality is you owe it to Allah and you owe it in terms of any showing the, any respect to the suffering of your brothers and sisters that you make use of the safety and security that you have and you make use of the fact that you can come to the masjid and that you can worship Allah in a degree of safety make use of it before time comes when you can't so they used to race to do good deeds and they used to call upon Allah in fear and hope we are scared. When we see what's happening to the Ummah, do we not feel scared? We feel scared. We feel scared that perhaps we have done so many sins 
that we've put ourselves in a situation where we've brought calamities upon ourselves as an ummah. I'm not talking about as a country. I'm not saying a people of a country have done it. I'm saying we as an ummah. Like the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, when he spoke about how the ummah will come and they will gather around you like a person invites someone to share from the plate of food. He said, oh messenger of Allah, will we be small in number in that day? He said, rather you will be large in number. But your deeds will be like the form of the sea. So we're scared. We're scared about the consequences of our mistakes and our actions. At the same time, we have immense hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we never ever lose hope. Udu'ullah wa antum muqinuna bil ijabah. Make dua. When you really are certain that Allah is going to answer your dua. When you make dua and you say the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma anjil mu'mineen al mustadha'afeen or Allahumma anjil mustadha'afeen min al mu'mineen fi Gaza, fi Palestine, fi kulli makan. Or Allah save the weak believers wherever they may be, in Gaza, in Palestine, in any place that the believers are suffering. Save the weak believers. Do you really believe that Allah will answer your dua? You should. You should have complete and total confidence that Allah will answer your dua. And if you see that the situation is prolonged, you realize that there is a hikmah for this, there is a wisdom for it, and there is a reason for it. And you don't stop making dua. Because everyone, their dua will be answered as long as they don't race and rush and go too fast. What does it mean to race and rush and go too fast? Qala da'utu. Wa da'utu. I made dua and I made dua. Falam yustajabli. But I didn't get answered. So I stopped making it. And we don't stop. Some people get tired. They say, how long are you going to make dua for? How long are you going to do Qunut and Nazila? How long are you going to pray and ask Allah to change the situation of the people? Keep on asking. We'll keep on asking and we'll keep on asking, believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to answer us. That's how the prophets used to be. أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعْهُمْ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Do you think you're going to enter Jannah? And you haven't been tested like the people who came before you? How was the test of the people who came before you? Before Islam, how was the test? The Prophet ﷺ told there will be a man. There was a man before you. He would be sawn in half. They would take him. They would take a saw and they would cut his body in half and he would not leave his religion. Look at what the Sahaba went through. Look at Bilal radiallahu an. They put a stone on him. They said it was like the weight of 10 men. In the burning heat, in the middle of the desert, in the summer sun, in the middle of the day. And they only heard him say, Ahadun Ahad. Allah is one, Allah is one. Do you think you're going to go to Jannah and Allah is not going to test you like the people before you were tested? They were tested with such calamities and such adversity that even the Rasul would say, along with the believers, <coughs> when is the help of Allah going to come? The help of Allah is near. And someone might say, the help of Allah is near, but how many months, how long? There's a very famous proverb or saying in Arabic, Kullu atin qarib. Everything which is coming is near. The future, my brothers, is for Islam. Al-aqiba lil muttaqi. And we're going to come to that in a moment. But I just wanted to talk to you about raja, about hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. Just think about this hadith. The famous hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu. 
He said, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله تعالى يا ابن آدم إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني قفرت لك على ما كان منك ولا أبالي O son of Adam, as long as you have hope in me and you keep on making dua to me I'll forgive whatever you have done and I will not mind If that is the minimum that you get out of making dua and keeping hope in Allah Wallahi, how amazing is that? Would you not take some months of hardship and suffering, some years of hardship and suffering to know that Yawm Al-Qiyamah, every single sin you'd ever done has been forgiven? I would take it. I would wish that I don't have to go through such hardship, but if I could know that going through hardship, I would stand Yawm Al-Qiyamah without a single sin on my name, this world is very, very short. Keep your hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you just because of your hope in Him and your dua to Him. So we don't stop making dua and we don't stop having hope in Allah azza wa jal. And I'm going to give you some of the reasons why we keep our hope in Allah azza wa jal. And then at the end, we're going to talk about what we should do practically to show our hope in Allah and to bring about a change in this ummah and its condition by Allah's permission. The first point that I'm going to make is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ The end result will be for the people of Taqwa. Believe me, whatever, whoever wins a battle today or tomorrow or the next day or a war or a fight or an argument or whatever it is, whoever wins today or tomorrow, I promise you guaranteed that the Muslim wins in the end. Al-Aqibah lil-Muttaqeen. The end victory will be for Islam and the Muslims. Look at the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 23 years. He strived and struggled against his enemies. They had good days and bad days. They had days where they, were, where they were tortured, where they were attacked, days where they lost battles. But in the end, who wins? Ketab Allah. Allah has written and prescribed, I will certainly be victorious, me and my prophets. The end result is for the believers. There is no doubt in it. Hatta even in the worst circumstance, when the Masih al-Dajjal comes and the majority of the people of the earth follow him and leave the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal, still in the end, who wins? The Muslims. In the end, the Muslims always win. And that's the first thing we need to have hope in Allah by knowing that whatever happens today or tomorrow and the next day, the aqibah, the end result will be a victory for Islam. The future is Islam. And wallahi, every one of those disbelievers, like they know their own children, they know the Prophet ﷺ. Those people who are given the scripture from the Jews and Christians, they know the Prophet ﷺ like they know their own children. And they know for certain that whatever they do today, tomorrow or the next month, or the next year, the end result for them, they know what it is. And they know that the aqibah is for the muttaqi. So don't let them have knowledge that you don't have. They know it. They know whatever they're doing, they've despaired. Wallah, if you see one of them, they have despair in them. Because they know it doesn't matter how many battles they win today, in the end, they know for certain, ilm yaqeen, that they're going to lose. And the end result will be for the believers. Al-Aqibah lil So in that, what is our action? Very simple. We have to be from the Muttaqeen. Because otherwise you might find yourself on the losing side. Allah told you who the winning side is. But the winning side is not necessarily the man whose name is Muhammad or the woman whose name is Fatima. The winning side is the people of Taqwa. So your duty is to try to be among those people of Taqwa. Because you know for certain that the people of Taqwa, those people of Taqwa, they will be the ones who will be successful in it. 
For example, even in this world, I'm not talking about Jannah. Even in this world today, you hear the story of the Mahdi, the authentic story, not the, not the lies of the Shia. The authentic story of the Mahdi. And that he will come and fill the earth with justice like it was filled with tyranny. And that Islam will be dominant. And that the earth will return to how it was in the time of Adam. This is in the dunya. How about the akhirah? In the dunya, qareeb and not far away. Allah tells us it's not far away. Not far away, Allah Azza wa Jal will send a person to rectify the entire earth and fill it with justice. This is in the dunya, so how about the akhirah? al aqiba lil muttaqeen. The end result is for the believers, there is no doubt about it. The statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ These days, we share out among the people. وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ these are the days that we share out among the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ وَلِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهِ So that Allah Azza wa Jal will test الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Which of you believes? وَيَتَخِذَ مِنْكُمْ شُهَدَاء And will take among you martyrs. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah does not love the oppressive people. What did we learn from this? That it is Allah's plan that the Muslims will sometimes lose. Because some days Allah will give you victory and other days Allah will give your enemies victory. And I strongly advise you brothers, Wallahi, it is very beneficial and it will really, really give you some perspective. Is take to reading history. Islamic history, not the history of the Kuffar. But Islamic history, you will see days when the Muslims, the whole world or most of the world was under the control of Islam and Islam was dominant. And you see days where the Muslims are and were in the past, Mustadha'afeen, even when they were hounded and attacked in Mecca and Medina, let alone, and I'm not talking about the time of the Prophet ﷺ, after that. Hounded and attacked in Mecca and Medina, let alone anywhere else. And then you will see days where Islam spread and was dominant. And you'll see places where it happened at different times. And that shows you the truth of the ayah. That these days we give your enemy victory sometimes, and we give you victory at other times. Why? Why would Allah give victory to the people that he hates? Didn't Allah say in the ayah, Wallahu la yuhibbu dhalimeen? Allah does not love the oppressive people. So if Allah does not love the oppressive people, why give them victory even sometimes? لِيَعْلَمَ Allah. So Allah will test. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Test you. Are you a believer or not? So what is our required action from this? Our required action from this is to believe in Allah, His religion and His victory. No matter what happens. When the Sahaba lost in the battle of Uhud and they lost around 70 of the righteous Sahaba and they suffered a very heavy blow did they turn back on their heels and leave Islam and say that we don't want anything to do with it and why has Allah not given us victory? Say it came from yourselves. And so what we do is we recognize that we have to believe in Allah. We have to pass this test. We have to show that no matter what happens to the Muslims anywhere in the world, we will not stop believing in Allah and His religion and the victory that will come from Him. And that Allah takes people to be martyrs. Don't think. And of course it pains us. It pains us 
with words we can't fight to say how much it pains us to see Muslims being killed tens of thousands of Muslims being killed and every single Muslim life in some of the ahadith is worth more to Allah than the Kaaba in some of the ahadith it came like that that a single life of a Muslim is worth more to Allah than the Kaaba but wallahi if someone is martyred and they die for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. That person, wallahi, they achieved something that is from the greatest achievements of this life. So don't feel sad for them. We feel sad for those who remain, for the families, for those who are suffering. But we don't feel sad for someone who died for the sake of Allah. But here is a very important point. Not everybody who dies as a Muslim in a conflict will die for the sake of Allah. Do we have evidence for that? Yes, even among the Sahaba, there would be people who would die on the battlefield with the Prophet Sallallahu They would say, Fulanun Shaheed, he's a Shaheed. The Prophet Sallallahu said to them, Oh, maybe he's not what you think. Maybe he's not what you think. Oh, kama qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So be careful here. Now this is even a message to people who are suffering. And if ever a Muslim goes through this suffering, make sure that if you're going to lose your life, you lose it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a believer. Wallahi, it pains me, it pains me to say that sometimes I come across people who have suffered immensely for is in Islam and as a Muslim in a Muslim country, they suffered so much. And yet, the way they approach that suffering is not, it's not what Islam asked them to do. And you see people getting angry with Allah and saying bad things about Islam and even cursing Allah. And even today, there are people screaming out in the, in the streets who want what we say to them, Khwani, one second, what do you want for Philistine? Do you want an Islamic country where Allah is obeyed? Where Islam is dominant? They're like, of course not. We just want those people to give us our land back. That's reality. Wani, I'm sorry if that's hard to hear. Like, and that's the work for many people. Many organizations and many people. I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying many people. Wallahi, go and ask them. Do you want Islam to be dominant? They're like, no. Of course not. We want our land back. We want to drive out the oppressor. We want... Yeah, I need democracy or we want whatever, what this and that and the other. That's very, very sad. Ikhwan. But it's an easy thing to fall into, right? So you make sure that if you're going to go through a calamity and you're going to suffer for something, you make sure it's for Allah Azza wa Jal. And Alhamdulillah, there are many people like that in Palestine and outside who are sincere for Allah Azza wa Jal. And when they suffer, they do so expecting the reward from Allah and hoping for it. And they want to see a country where Islam is dominant, where Allah is obeyed. Not just to see a certain flag or a certain people or a certain ethnicity or whatever. So we want for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters that if we go through a hardship and a calamity, we go into it in Islam and we come out of it in Islam, even if it means that we have to leave this world. And those people who do that, wallahi, they got a reward that cannot be described in words. So we don't, and we don't feel sad for them, for a person who lost their life for the sake of Allah, because that person is getting from Allah Rewards that you cannot describe. But we feel sad for a person who suffered immensely and didn't get rewarded for it. And we feel sad for a person who didn't pass that test of Iman when Allah gave the enemy some days victory and gave you victory on other days. Look at the battle of Al-Ahzab. When all the confederates came against, and I don't know, I mean, today we see any the non-Muslims have very strong armies and very powerful weapons and all of that. 
But a similar kind of thing, in fact, even more severe, happened to the Sahaba in the Battle of Al-Ahzab. All of the armies of Arabia came against them. They just, Sahaba, they're few people in Medina. And they came against them, the armies of Arabia. And yet when they saw all those armies come against them, what did they say? This is what Allah and His Messenger promised us. And Allah and His Messenger told the truth. And He increased them in Iman and submission. They saw the strength of the enemy and their Iman went up. They saw the enemy have power, their Iman went up. Not down. And it only increased them in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ مَاكِرِينَ Your enemies are plotting. And Allah is plotting. And Allah is the best of those who plot. And this is from the reasons of hope. Imagine all the things that the non-Muslims are plotting right now against Islam. I'm not shy to say it, they're plotting. Of course they're plotting, Allah told us. They're plotting a plan. The people who disbelieve, what are they doing? They're spending their money. They're spending their money. To take people away from the path of Allah. They're going to spend all that money to destroy Islam. Then what's going to happen? Then they're going to regret spending it. And then they're going to be defeated. They're going to spend all that money, all those weapons, all those things they're going to buy. And then in the end, they're going to say, what a waste it was. And then they're going to be defeated. So don't be worried about the plots and plans of the disbelievers. They have huge plans. Their plans are so big. The mountains would almost be removed from the place because of the plans they have. They have plans to, that yani, if they put the plan against the mountain, they'll move the mountain from its place. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns their plans against them. They think they're winning, and every step they take takes them closer to a loss. They're plotting a plan, but Allah is plotting a plan. The person says, I spent all of this money. Some of the Mufassirun, they said, this ayah, it came up regarding the people who spent their money to take people away from Islam, to destroy Islam. But in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed everything that they did. And Allah azza wa jal takes them and seizes them from where they couldn't imagine. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about how he seizes them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how Allah azza wa jal opens for them the doors to everything. حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْرِسُونَ فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْرِسُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them He opens the door for everything for them until when they are so happy with what they've got. They say, we won, it's over, we've got everything we want. Allah seizes them from the place they could never imagine. And they're cut off from every option and nothing, meaning there's nothing for them. From the causes of hope is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in the hadith Qudusi. Which the Prophet ﷺ narrated that Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. And as my slave thinks of me. If we have good thoughts of Allah, 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill for us those good thoughts. And Allah will answer our dua. And from the means of hope is to remember what happened to the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam and the suffering they went through. What about Ayyub? When he called out to his Lord, I have been touched by extreme hardship, and you are the most merciful of all those who show mercy. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? We answered his dua. Allah gave him his family back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected everything for him. What happened about in the same page of Surah Al-Anbiya? Allah mentions Yunus. Allah mentions the dua of Yunus. He said, La ilaha illa ant. There is no God worthy of worship but you. Subhanak, you are free of all imperfections. Inni kuntu min al -dhalim. And here's a very important point, and that is a tawbah wal istighfar. Wala nudiqannahum min al adab al adana dun al adab al akbari la allahum yarji'un. Allah makes you taste some minor suffering instead of the major punishment. So you can come back to Allah. Not just the people who are suffering, the people who are watching even. The people who are like us, watching other people. So we come back to Allah. We make tawbah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to correct our situation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. And so by this we clean our hearts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from those people by which he brings his victory. Because Allah only brings that victory after he cleans the hearts of the people. When Allah cleans the hearts of the people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanses those hearts and cures them of the sicknesses that is in them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them a cause for victory. So one of the things we can do to hasten the victory that is coming from Allah Azza wa Jal is to turn back to Allah Azza wa Jal in Tawbah. And don't think this is a small thing. Wallah, it's not a small thing. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al -dhalimin. It's no God worthy of worship, but you, O oh Allah, exalted are you. I am from the people who have oppressed myself. We realize what happened in Uhud. Where did it come from? It came from you, your sins, your disobedience. So we have a chance now. We cannot say really to the people who are suffering today. We cannot give them a lecture. Yani. They're in a situation of desperation. They're just trying to survive from one day to the next. But you and me, we can do something for ourselves and for the ummah at large. And that is to change ourselves, to make tawbah. To go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. And when we do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrects for us our situation. Like the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah An Nur. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبَلِهِمْ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal said, Allah has promised those who believe and do good deeds. He will certainly give them authority on the earth. Like he gave authority to the people who came before them. And he will allow them to practice the religion that he is pleased for them to practice. And he will replace their fear 
with safety. They will worship me, Allah says, and they will not make any partners with me. And whoever disbelieves after that, they are the fasiqoon. Inna Allah la yukhriful mi'ad. Allah doesn't break his promise. Allah promised us he will give us authority. He will put us in charge on the earth. He promised us we will be able to practice our religion freely. He promised us that we won't be scared anymore and we'll be safe and secure. He promised us that we'll be able to worship him and not make any partner with him. But what do we need to bring? We need to bring Iman, Amal Saleh, righteous deeds. So isn't it our job now if we have the ability to do that? You cannot ask a person who is yani, dying from hunger, who is being attacked from every side. You can't, yani, there's little that they can do except to, to beg Allah and to just do the best that they can in the situation that they are in. Like if you're in a situation of safety, if you're in a situation of ease, could you not be from those people who have Iman and do righteous deeds so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about that authority on the earth and bring about that safety and the ability to practice, the ability to practice your religion in safety. And then think about the dua of the prophets والسلام, After all of that, Allah answered their dua. Allah answered the dua of Yunus. We'll answer the dua of every believer like that. They raced to do good deeds. They hoped in Allah. They feared Allah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring for them or brought for them what it is that they wanted. Think about the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا In this ayah or the end of the first ayah and the, 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 the next ayah Wallahi, it should be enough for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever has taqwa of Allah, Allah will make him a way out. If you have taqwa of Allah, Allah is going to make you a way out of anything you're in and provide for you from where you could never imagine. Whoever puts their trust in Allah, Allah is sufficient for them. فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ what did the Sahaba say when they saw the Ahzab? Allah wa ni'm al Allah is sufficient for us and what an excellent disposer of affairs he is. What an excellent disposer of affairs he is. Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you leave it to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you. But there is something Allah requires from us. Not because Allah Azza wa Jal needs it, He doesn't need it. But because it's in our interests, and that is fi'lul asbab. To do the things that bring about the help of Allah. You need to do what you can. Does Allah ask you to do what you can't do? He doesn't ask you. La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. No one Allah will ask them to do what they cannot bear. Nobody, Allah will ask them to do what they cannot bear. Every single person, Allah requires you to do the best you can. And if you do the best you can with the circumstances you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you a way out and Allah will suffice you against your enemy. And very important in this is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَمَن يُؤْمِن بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِي قَلْبًا Whoever believes in the decree of Allah, Allah will settle their heart. The ayah came regarding Qadr. 
That's why the Sahaba said, Nothing is going to happen to us except what Allah Azza wa Jal wrote for us. And so when we believe in the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, we realize it's not about good or evil. It's not about Allah giving us a good situation or a bad situation. It's about opportunity, a chance to get near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Perhaps you hate something and it's actually better for you. It's actually better for you. And if you ever want to think about that in a nice way, in a way that gets your, gets your mind thinking, think about the story of Musa and Al-Khadir in Surah Al-Kahf. Look at what happened in each situation when he scuttled the ship, he killed the boy and he rebuilt the wall. Musa thought that what is happening is something bad. And Musa thought that this is just a, a, a terrible thing. And in the end, every single thing that happened had a positive outcome that Musa والسلام, was not aware of. Scuttling the ship saved it from being stolen by the by the, the king. The boy dying stopped him from being growing up to be a disbeliever. And then the parents were given a new child who grew up to be a believer after that. So both of their children were saved. The one who died because he didn't reach the age of maturity where he was able to oppress his parents. And the new one that they were given in his place. And that the building of the wall saved the treasure of the two orphans. All sorts of things in our lives are like that. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Maybe you hate something and maybe actually there's a lot of good for you. From the names of Allah Azza wa Jal that give us hope. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Help only comes from Allah. Victory only comes from Allah. نِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّصِيرِ What an excellent mawla. What an excellent bringer of victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al nasir the one who brings victory. Allah azza wa jal is al-mawla, the one who protects his servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overcomes ghalib. He overcomes and victory is his, subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the things that gives us hope is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا With every hardship there will come ease. With every hardship there will come ease. There is no way that one hardship can defeat two, two types of ease, right? The ease came twice but the hardship only came, only came once. So with every single thing that Allah makes difficult, there will be ease. But what does Allah Azza wa Jal require from us in relation to His name and Nasir? Allah will certainly give victory to the one who supports and gives the means of victory goes for the means of victory for Islam. And the means of victory, my dear brothers and sisters, it's not based on our emotions. It can't be. Our religion is not like that. Our religion is not a religion where we throw the book behind our back and we get excited about things. Our religion is anything that happens to us. We open the Quran and we look, we open the hadith and we look. We open the lives of the Sahaba and the great scholars of Islam and we look. I am amazed by the statement of Shaykh ibn Taymin rahimahullah ta'ala. He said about emotion. He said we need emotion to motivate us. 
That's true. We need emotion to motivate us. But emotion does not decide for us what is right and wrong. Does that make sense? And we need emotion to motivate us. We need, and it's good that you feel pain. It's good that you cry. It's good that you're angry. That's a good thing. That's a sign of your Iman. If you didn't care about what's happening to Muslims around the world, that would be a sign of a weakness in your faith. None of you believe till you love for your brother what you love for yourself. But emotions don't change what is haram and what is halal. Emotions don't change the sharia. Emotions don't change the laws of the Quran. Emotions don't change the rules that Allah sent down. They motivate you. They drive you forward. But they don't change the rules of Islam. So when we help the religion of Allah and we give victory to Allah, we do it in the way that Allah said and in the way the Prophet ﷺ said. Even if a person's heart tells them something different. And how many people, I mean, how many people are there that they tried to do something to benefit Islam and the Muslims in a way that Allah didn't permit? And they didn't bring a praiseworthy outcome from it. So we're going to say that whatever we're going to do to help the religion of Allah and to bring victory to the religion of Allah we're going to do it in the way that Allah told us to do it. And with the sunnah of the Prophet And we're not going to go beyond what Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allowed us to do. A couple more points I think before we, you know, we don't we want to take too much of everybody's time inshaAllah ta'ala. And I mentioned a lot of things inshaAllah ta'ala for us to think about. Think about the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَوْلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَأَنَّ الْكَافِرِينَ لَا مَوْلَى لَهُمْ This is because Allah is the protector of those who believe. But the disbelievers, they don't have anyone to protect them. And that's actually the reality of the situation. تَحْسَبُهُمْ جَمِيعًا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ شَتَّى You think that they're all united together? But their hearts are all divided among each other. They're not united together. They despair for themselves and they despair for their victory. And they know it. And they only aim to cause as much problems and as much corruption as possible before the inevitable happens to them. They don't have anyone to protect them or anyone to give them victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wallahu ghalibu. Allah will certainly be victorious in what He commands. But most people don't know. Most people don't know. Allah in the Nasr Allahi Qareeb, the help of Allah is near. And we need to remember also, in terms of our actions and what we need to do in a practical way, the statement of Allah That's a practical step for us. If we want to see a change in this Muslim world, we have to drive that change ourselves. Because Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. So we have to change our own condition and we have to be a drive for that change with what Allah has given us the ability to do with what is within the limits of the Sharia. So there's some things Allah has not given us the ability to do. There are some things we would love to do, but Allah Azza wa Jal has not given us the Qudra, the ability to do it. So we're going to look at what has Allah given me the ability to do. 
And whatever Allah has given me the ability to do, try to do as much of it as we can. And to do in line and in agreement with the Quran and the Sunnah. And my dear brothers, do not ever, ever look down upon dua. And I'm not saying to suffice with dua, by the way. I'm not, I, in my talk, I've not said just make dua and sit down. No, I'm not saying to, to make dua and sit down. And you can, there are many, many things that you can do which are within the limits of the Sharia, which are permissible bi idnillahi ta'ala. But in terms of dua, don't look down on it. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يزيد في العمر إلا البر ولا يرد القدر إلا الدعاء. He said, nothing will increase your life except good deeds and righteousness. And nothing will change or will, not change, let's see, the word, nothing will repel a decree that has been decreed for you except dua. Nothing changes the law and mahfuz, that's for sure. But the decrees that are given from year to year and month to month and the personal things that happen to a person, when you make dua, you can change that by Allah's permission. So don't look down upon dua. The dua of the Prophet wasallam that he used to make in the situation where the believers were being attacked and oppressed by an enemy. He used to say, Allahumma anjil mustada'afina min al-mu'mineen. Allahumma ashtud wat'ataka ala mudar. Allahumma ja'alha sinina ka sini yusuf. He said, O oh Allah, save the, oppre the oppressed believers. O oh Allah, increase your punishment upon, and he mentioned the tribe that was oppressing them. He said, O oh Allah, give them a drought, like the drought that was given at the time of Yusuf. And he give them the time of hardship, the years of hardship, like the years of hardship that were given to the people of Yusuf. These are all things for us to think about, otherwise the topic is big. But I hope inshaAllah ta'ala we've understood reasons to have hope and we've understood how we should see the events that go on in the world. To be honest, each one, each event, each event and each country is worthy of its own lecture. And I have given some topics and we've spoken about Palestine and about the situation there and about the history of it, and all of you should know that, by the way. It's very, it's important, Wallahi, to know what, how did we end up at this place and what has happened over the passage of the years, not just since the early part of the 20th century, but even before that, in terms of Islam and the different religious groups that came and went and what happened. Wallahi, there's a lot of lessons in it. <coughs> and there's a lot of explanation and context to what is going on today. Also from the things that I think a person should benefit from, Wallahi, is to know that our allegiance and our love and our support is for Islam and the Muslims. And to know that the non-Muslims, they will not give you anything to help. That's why the reality is, and when the Muslims suffer, you might see one or two non-Muslims get up and move about a bit, but in the end of the day, nobody is going to come and help you. The help comes from Allah and the alliance and the allegiance that the Muslims have for each other and the love that the Muslims have for each other and the care that the Muslims have for each other. And if you were to ask really, one of the things that has really made this Ummah suffer, and he, one of the things is that loss of care for each other and allegiance for each other and instead allegiance became to a small group of people like i like the people in my city the people in my country or the people in my locality but not really caring for the people who are your brothers and sisters in islam wherever they might be so you realize that the non-muslims are not going to do anything for you if we as muslims are going to sort out our issues we have to sort them out within ourselves and we have to find a solution within ourselves. There's no point in going to the non-Muslims and saying, can you do this for me? Because they have only in their own eyes, their own interests. And their interests and ours don't match. 
And that's why Allah tells us, don't take them as awliya, don't take them as protectors, don't take them as allies. They are allies to each other, they're not allies to us. So there's a lot of lessons for us to learn. There's a lot of things we need to do. There's a lot of hard work needs to be done in every city, by every person, by every family, to bring about a change. But once we know that the, the change is possible, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help this ummah, that victory will come for Islam and for the Muslims, then suddenly your full focus becomes, how can I be part of that victory? Because the victory is coming. There's no doubt about that. But how can I be a part of that? What can I do to contribute towards that? That is the key question. And that's where you have to look at yourself and not look at other people. It's easy to point the finger. And I think that's worthy of mentioning. People do point the finger. And sometimes rightly so. Like I'm not, I'm not saying, sometimes they say, look, this person is not doing their job. So hey, they're not doing their job. It's true. Like in reality, more important than that is, am I doing my job? That's even more important. Because I might not be able to change the other person not doing theirs, but I can at least do something about myself and the people that I'm responsible for, my family, my community, and so on. But I hope that this gives us some idea of hope in a time of hardships and calamities and some kind of context to the events that are going on in the world. And it's not, I, I didn't get into the fiqh of things with a short lecture, we don't, didn't have to go into every detail. But I hope that we give some principles and some ideas for people to think about. And a lot, lot more needs to be thought about, a lot needs to be said. And one of the things is very important. And one of the things you can do in this time that I also believe people look down upon and don't think it's the value of it, is to share reliable, beneficial, Islamic information. A lot of people share news, right? That's like a lot of people look, share what's happening in the world and raising awareness if it's reliable news, uh, that's also beneficial, right? You have to be check, you have to check that it's reliable. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in ja'akum fasikhun bi naba'in fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. Don't be a person who don't be a person who shares fake news. She might hurt people after that. But yeah, sharing beneficial news can be something. But even better, sharing Islamic knowledge with people. Sharing people, there are people who, wallahi, they are lost today. They are looking at the world and thinking, what is Islam and what do I even believe and how do I even process this in my mind? Share something with them, help them, guide them, give them something positive and beneficial to do. Because the more people we can enact a change in, the more yani, it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will decree that change to happen within this ummah. Because Allah changes us when we make that change ourselves. And we understood that our role is not to bring victory. Does that make sense? Our role is not to bring victory. It's not my job to bring victory to the Muslims. My job is to do what? to do the causes that I can do. What is in front of me that I can do today? Do everything that I can do today. And then put my trust in Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not break his promise. Jalla fi ula. I mentioned some of the points and the what Allah is made easy for me to mention. It's getting late now and we know that also you guys have some, some food to eat, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, briefly for a couple of minutes, um, if there are some questions, inshallah, I will try my best to answer. There might be some things that might be difficult, they might require research, and if that's the case, I'll tell you that I, I need to look into this issue. But wherever possible, I would try to answer if someone had a question or if there was something that uh, needed clarification, inshallah. Otherwise, then I would say to the brothers that, uh, inshallah, believe there is uh, something waiting for you, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, and the masjid has organized it. And I want to say jazakumullah khairan to all of you for coming, for giving your time, for listening, for having sabr with me as well. We're a little bit late. We came from another program in, uh, in Huddersfield. Well, I had so many programs, I can't remember where the last one was. And he was in Huddersfield. And it was a bit tricky getting here. But Alhamdulillah. Inshallah ta'ala, we ask Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us what benefits us. We ask Allah to benefit us with what he teaches us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge. We ask Allah to give us the ability to act upon it. 
اللهم أبرم هذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه عهل معصيتك ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about a change in this ummah We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about a change that causes good to be commanded and evil to be forbidden and people to be guided We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma anjil mu'minin al-mustada'afina fi kulli makah اللهم أنجل مستضعفين من المؤمنين في غزة اللهم أنجل مستضعفين من المؤمنين في غزة اللهم كن لهم ولا تكن عليهم وانصرهم ولا تنصر عليهم وانصرهم على من بغى عليهم We ask Allah عز وجل to save the weak and oppressed believers wherever they are in the world and we ask Allah عز وجل to save the weak and oppressed believers in غزة We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to support them we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them victory. We ask Allah azza wa jal to correct their situation, to bring relief to their hardship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring a cure for their sick. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept those that passed away among them, among the shuhada. Hada wallahu alam. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.